this virus. Right. Now we're going to use what we call allogeneic, which is a third-party stem cell, so we don't have to keep harvesting from every cancer patient and combining it with the, with the virus into the... And does that make it stronger? And what it does is we call potentiation. It, it gives enough viral load to do its job in the tumor microenvironment. Because if you put a virus directly into the tumor, it gets extinguished by the blood fairly quickly. Your, your blood has a very innate properties to, to combat the virus. So it shuts it down before it, it down. does its job. That's right. And okay. the cool thing about the, this, the, uh, the potentiation is that we, uh, we, we help grow it, incubate it before going into the tumor. And then once in the tumor, with a cell delivery, uh, the, tum the, the virus continues to grow inside the tumor microenvironment. So. Okay, so this is for tumors that you can spot, that you've seen, that, you've, that the doctors have identified, and so it's targeted therapy, right? And okay. it, is that introduced through, with an injection, or how is it introduced? That's a good question. It's a, it's a, what we do is we do an MRI scan. Um, the doctor looks at the tumor, and then the day of the injection, it's a CT laser delivery injection. So we're very precise. Uh, so so it's very precise the way we have imaging today and all the radiologists we can have at their disposal. That is remarkable. I just can't even imagine how that all that whole process works. So so that that, that targeted uh, uh, Injection, if you will, the, is it is it a physical injection? Or is it a laser injection? What what kind of injection is that? Uh, it's you know a, what I'm asking. Yeah, it's a, a physical injection. It's a physical with a needle, injection. Needle and a, like a we'll use a quadrifuse needle, uh, okay. a needle that has the ability to inject in multiple points. To actually, the needle itself while it's moving around inside the body. Yeah, it actually has its spokes goes out, and then it, you can actually go into it, and you have multiple areas that you can uh, inject from. So it's very good. Once, the, once this uh, process hits the cancer cell, what happens to the cancer cell? Well, you have what we call oncolysis setting in, so the, the destruction of the tumor cells. And then what we do is we, uh, you know, what we do is we, these antigen presenting cells is a byproduct of the debris uh, from oncolysis goes to uh, distant tumor sites and uh, educates T cells to go prevent recurrence of. Uh, cancer and also hit distant tumor sites that we can inject. So we don't always have to inject the actual tumor, um, just the main tumor, and then you have... And your own system doesn't, doesn't work. Well, the estoppel effect, you actually have the ability to go to other tumor sites. Uh, the technology allows it to kill other cancers and, and tumors, uh, cancerous tumors and other sites. Now, Alan, why did you get into this? Uh, you're a businessman. You've, you've done a lot of entrepreneuring in your life, I take it. This company is, uh, is, is interesting. It's, it's out there with so many trying to, to combat the, the, the scourge of cancer in the world. Why are you involved in this particular company? Well, uh, I particularly uh, met Dr. Salai, who is the founder, a um, 78-year-old uh, German scientist who came here, taught at Caltech, uh, world-renowned. In his regard, and he, uh, my dad had prostate cancer in 2014, I think. And everybody has a story that um, they're always looking for something out there that might be groundbreaking. Um, he didn't have this technology at the time, but I went in and uh, um, became uh, well known to his, what he's doing. And I got to know him, and then um, he came to me with a great idea to start a new company. And I was his first backer, and it was more of a passion play. Uh, and I sense that the, the, his technology was solid, that he had deep science, uh, and, uh, and I was proven right that we have really strong patents and really good clinical results uh, due to his science. You're right. We, we all do carry these stories with us and with hopes that mm -hmm. something that some action that we do can change. Mm -hmm. I know going through that with, uh, as I mentioned earlier in, in the program, my father-in-law having had cancer, it seemed that we were learning so much more about cancer and its effects and its mm -hmm. treatments than I had ever learned before. And, and quite often patients and families of cancer patients, and even if you have cancer yourself, you do learn an awful lot. And so that must have been the experience that propelled you forward. Absolutely. You know, you, when you're passionate, it's easy to pick things up. And you know, I've spent thousands of hours now uh, learning a field. But you know, we have great scientists. Uh, we have good doctors. Uh, we have a good team, and it's all now at the stage of collaboration and teamwork, and reaching consensus and making solid decisions. Get right advisors online. Uh, we have no problem. Uh, not invented the here syndrome. We we ask for uh, resources out there. We get good medical directors. We uh, tap into. Um, or 
we have John Wayne Cancer Center, Moffitt Cancer Center, and IH National Institute of Health. Uh, we're doing a uh, research with them. And how soon before this all comes to market? And you see it every day with every doctor. Uh, it, you know, we still have to do our phase one B two A trial, and then um, we're talking to the Pancreatic Cancer Network, and it's very promising. Um, and that's the first adaptive trial in the world that I know of that goes to phase one through three, at least with the US FDA is what I know of, correction on that. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we feel that um, it, may, it may be in a couple of years, I mean, depending on this adaptive trial that we're getting involved with, uh, with the Pancreatic Cancer Network. So we're, we're talking to them right now. So there's a lot of interest by oncologists that are really treating cancer patients that hear about us and they, uh, they want to know more. So it's a good sign that we're, we're on the right path. path. Yeah. All right, Coeden Therapeutics, Alan Kermisa, thanks so much. Appreciate all the good work you're doing out there to help our cancer patients. Thanks, thanks so much for being here this morning on, on, this, on this edition of San Diego People. Great to have you all here this morning uh, here for San Diego People. Join us tonight for the KUSI News at 6 and 11. I'm Carl Sadowski. Have a great day. This week on Good Morning San Diego, gearing up for San Diego Startup Week. We're getting an inside look into what to expect at San Diego's largest startup event. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Veteran took a hobby and turned it into a successful business this week. I love you. I just want to tell you, uh... ...and fantastic customer service, just like you would expect. A premium experience right here in your own... You were the best mom to me ever in my life, and, uh, this day is your day. And I know you're looking over me, and I uh, wish you would have gave me some more time because uh, they're coming out with some new technologies, but uh, I'm going to just need you to be my angel and uh, help me with some stuff because uh, I'm going to come up with uh, an invention that's going to uh, basically help people live comfortably until technology is invented so that they can be healed, you know? And... Uh, yeah, so, I mean, you, you made it pretty tough on me. I'm, I'm going to have to come up with something to bring you back from uh, the dead and everything. That, that'll that be, like, as soon as possible. But uh, I'm, I'm going to think of something. Though. I miss you so much. And uh, I love you.